News Hub has been leaked financial statements showing none of the country's politics are financially viable on their own. It comes as the government has been taking a wrecking ball to the mega politic Te Pukinga. The organisation lost another senior leader today and there's been a backlash from staff who have essentially been tasked with digging their own graves. Political reporter Lloyd Burr has the story. Te Pukinga motivated Penny Simmons to go into politics. She was the boss of Southern Institute of Technology when the mega merger happened. Now she's the minister. She's scrapping it. Starting at the top today, Chief Executive Peter Winder, gone. I wish him well. I thank him and Murray for their service. Murray Strong quit as Te Pukinga chair 10 days ago. News Hub's been told of a meeting between Peter Winder, Murray Strong and the minister that was a total show, with the minister acting in a very unprofessional way. I wouldn't characterise it quite like that, but it was certainly a meeting where I had to make clear the change of direction by uh, the current government. It's understood that included asking staff who established Te Pukinga to carry out disestablishing it. It's a very hard ask and, um, yeah, I don't envy them. Staff, though, are very anxious about what the direction is going to look like and so it's really important that we move quite quickly. But moving quickly could lead to something else. An insider saying if the disestablishment goes ahead, all the North Island polytechnics will be in danger of folding very quickly. But it's worse than that. News Hub's been leaked financial statements showing all 16 polytechs are essentially broke. The worst... Fetirea and Welltech, $28 million in deficit. Waikato Institute of Technology is $22.5 million in the red. Open Polytechnic is not far behind on $22 million. And Toi Ohumai is nearly $21 million. The deficit at all 16 Polytechnics totalling more than $185 million. It's absolutely correct and that is a, a result mainly of the unified funding scheme that the previous government brought in. If the Minister wants to bring back Polytechnic provisions she will need to stump up the cash. It will come at a cost. Their funding will increase and they will also be working very hard over the next year to get the international students back. Then there's the case of who will do the re-establishing. News Hub's been told none of the institutes have leadership anymore. No one has a CEO, CFO, CIO, ICT director, head of HR, head of facilities or many of the senior academic roles anymore, so who will be making the decisions? Every campus, uh, every office is uh, cut to the bone and... Um, Staff have left in droves. How many people have been sacked or have taken redundancy? Uh, look, I, I don't know. I, I understand some have resigned. And there will likely be more to come. And Lloyd, there has been another resignation today. Yeah, there has. One of Te Pukinga's Deputy Chief Executives, Megan Gibbons, she has resigned. Uh, that is effective from January the 12th. And the Acting Chairperson of Te Pukinga's Council uh, made these staff movements uh, clear to staff today in an email that's described this year as a big and challenging year. Next year is going to be uh, very similar to that. Now, in terms of Peter Winder, I did try giving him a call today. He had nothing uh, more to add. I should say, though, that he didn't resign. Um, he made an, had an agreement with the Governing Council that uh, he would take redundancy, and that redundancy uh, comes to an end in January. Uh, so some big movements at Te Pukinga, the, the mega polytech that's going through a pretty mega public demolition. Yes, absolutely. That's Lloyd Byrne live at Parliament. Thanks very much, Lloyd.